Hello everyone and welcome back to my Galileo 6.4x series in Kerbal Space Program 1.2.2 and in this episode I am trying to get to orbit. We've got a little probe core, a goo container. Last episode I was making initial attempts to see how things worked out and this time we really need to make sure that the upper stages remain stable and some people suggested control surfaces. First of all we don't have very good control surfaces. We've got a lot of fire spitter parts there, biplane parts and warplane parts but not really wings with good control surfaces at least not ones that I want to put on the upper stages because they might be too heavy. Remember, we still have weight restrictions, 18 tons, and part restrictions, 30 parts. You can see me checking the reusability. Uh, we did recover the two solid boosters, but we lost the Vanguard stage on the previous launch, uh, which was not as intended. We do want to try and recover that. Uh, the rear guard stage, which is permanently attached to the probe core, we don't uh, need to recover. We'll recover that with some... Uh, a garbage retrieval mission later on but so I've added two fins to the Vanguard stage to help stabilize it and we'll see how it goes really this is not dissimilar from the sounding rockets of the 1950s and it bears some resemblance to the Vanguard rocket uh, though the Vanguard rocket was not spin stabilized it had little RCS thrusters to help it out and also gimbling on the Vanguard engine also verniers on the Vanguard engine which we do have here too but uh, I'm using spin stabilization, which also means that control surfaces wouldn't be very good because, uh, well, I can't control it. And it's just better for the craft to control itself using spin stabilization because we don't have SAS. Um, any sort of control input by me, because of lag and uh, other forms of delay, uh, will end up having oscillations and stuff like that. So without SAS dampening that out, uh, it's better for us to just spin stabilize. Now, uh, oddly enough, I only have one fin on the Vanguard stage there, uh, so we've got sort of a shark thing going. I didn't have symmetry on, and uh, we're about to see how that works out after this SRB stage here. Remember, the reason we put the bigger fins on the SRB stage instead of higher up is because of the center of lift. We have discovered that. We had a flipping problem. The rocket did flip, and uh, we don't want that to happen, so putting the fins, uh, bigger fins further down means that it's not going to flip, but it also means that we don't continue catching the air with the upper stages, and you see we're still in the atmosphere, definitely within the atmosphere, uh, when we finish off this SRB, so we needed some form of stabilization. Is one fin going to do the trick? I don't know. Well, okay, so far so good. Good, but the spin is slowing down. We really need to keep the spin up. So one solution will be to uh, sort of tilt these as well and not just tilt the lower ones. The fact that this spin is straight means that it's slowing our rotation down and we don't want that to happen. We want it to keep spinning. Also our trajectory is a little bit steep so we might want to fix that altogether still going well, in a direction, not the right direction, we're actually headed south. For some reason it does want to head south. I'll have to check about the launch pad orientation, whether, um, like the KSC in stock Kerbal, which is oriented towards the east, maybe this one is just oriented to the south to begin with. I'll have to verify that. And so we get to the stage most needing stabilization. This stage, this rear guard stage, actually has most of the delta V to get to orbit. And the reason for that is because we're trying to recover the other stages, so we can't have the other stages going too fast. Uh, otherwise, they'll just burn up on the way back down. And that was what happened with the Vanguard stage earlier. From the previous flight, it actually burned up. So we need this stage to do most of the work to get to orbit. And that's to the tune of maybe uh, 4,000 meters per second, something around that range. So it's pretty hefty, but as you can see, it's, it's definitely oscillating and I'm trying to hold it together but it's tough without SAS so we'll have to see of course it's still rotating a little bit just not enough to spin stabilize the rotation is actually making it much harder to control it but if it was properly spin stabilized I wouldn't even have to touch it ultimately I try to at least perform some science we've got mystery goo observation on space near Gale, so sending that over, but that diminishes all of our electric charge and it didn't all get sent, and so now we're completely out of control. So that's a bust. 
a uh, little failure on my part. We need some more power, but we don't actually have batteries. So it's not really useful to carry the mystery glue like this if we can't send the data back, is it? But for now, I didn't mess with the payload. I just fixed the fins, made sure there are two of them, make sure they're tilted a little bit to keep the spin going, right? Because just having them straight will slow the spin down, which we don't want. And also I wanted to tilt the rocket just a little bit more because in the previous one we were a little bit too steep. Just a tiny little tick more there and we'll see how that works out. You can see the center of lift arrow indicating that we're going to be headed in that direction. And so the trick overall to getting a spin stabilized orbital trajectory with a sounding rocket correct is to make sure that your tilt uh, matches your thrust to weight ratio overall. And so the higher the thrust to weight ratio of the rocket, the more you tilt the rocket. The lower the thrust to weight ratio, the less you can tilt the rocket. And if you have a very low thrust to weight ratio, like some of the heavier rockets, like a Falcon 9 or something like that, you really can't spin stabilize it. Uh, well, it'd be really touchy. At that point, you really want the gimbling to an actual avionic control and everything. You know, SAS, that sort of thing. And uh, Mechjeb, that sort of thing. To handle it, KOS of course. So I suggested me using KOS for launches, but that's after we get a good launch system. These sounding rocket kind of things, I don't think I'm gonna bother with uh, KOS script on. But yeah, once we get a proper rocket line going, then KOS should play a part, yeah. And so here we are getting to the critical rear guard stage. That stage is off. You know how short the Vanguard stage is, and that was because I was trying to recover it. And so I figured that if it was going to go for longer, it was going to burn up. And so making it shorter meant that it could survive. And so that was the goal there. We have a fairly high pitch here, but I'm, I'm just going to let it go. And there's our Delta V. I was just checking it out. You see a four and a half minute burn time. So really long burn to orbit and looking at the Delta V we really don't have enough to get all the way to orbit but let's see how close we get. Eventually some oscillations did develop uh, partly because I was trying to use control input to optimize the trajectory a little bit. That didn't work out very well uh, but as it went uh, we did fall short of orbit though we got further along than uh, ever before so that's good. Just need a little bit more optimization here and there, and this should be able to do it. Since we ended up with a pretty high apoapsis, 250 kilometers ish, and plenty of time to apoapsis, I decided to tilt the rocket a little bit more in order to transfer some of that vertical velocity into horizontal velocity, perhaps getting us closer to orbit. So here's how that turned out. Pretty much right away, I figured that I had overdone it because, you know, when you're only 400 meters, this is not the pitch you want unless you've got lots of thrust to weight ratio. And we didn't have lots of thrust to weight ratio, so being uh, this flat at uh, two kilometers meant that we were sort of more of a more of an air to ground kind of missile rather than an orbital launch system. So the best I could do was let the SRBs run out and try and recover those and, well, that doesn't help, but also try and recover, yeah, it was just the decoupler that uh, blew up, so not too much, though the decouplers are worth something. Um, but also try and recover the Vanguard stage, of course, which has parachutes on it, so the key to that will be getting out of render range from the Vanguard stage. So I ended up flying the rear guard stage for a little ways, sort of like a cruise missile, uh, trying to get away from the vanguard stage so that stage recovery could pick it up. The SRBs were successfully recovered. We see there the messages from stage recovery. But nothing about the vanguard stage right there. And honestly, I forget whether we actually got a message about the recovery of the vanguard stage on this one. But anyway, the obvious solution to our current problem is to untilt the rocket a little bit, but the question is, does it really have enough delta V to get to orbit, or are we being a little bit tight with it? So here we go, spinning it up again. On to the second SRB here at about 6 kilometers, and the spin rate is good, we're about at the speed of sound right there, 
losing velocity there actually you'll notice not the greatest situation really this is a tight tight thrust weight ratio rocket and the vanguard stage you can see how that goes fairly small stage but critical I don't think we could do without it because thrust weight ratio again we need the extra boost and then finally at 1800 meters per second 75 kilometers we have the rear guard stage the question is does it have enough juice it's spinning fine sort of a little bit wobbly got a procession going very wobbly close to the end of its burn but you can see the periapsis negative 600 500 ish getting close that surface velocity there, remember orbital velocity is 6,100, but the surface velocity doesn't include the existing rotation of the planet. And here, apoapsis is going really high. Do we have enough? And we end up at 679 by 181. That is orbit. That would be orbit around Earth with a 112 kilometer atmosphere. That's definitely orbit around Gale with a 6.4x multiplier, of course. And so we have our first orbital probe spinning around. Actually, it's going to be a little bit hard to recover it. We uh, confirm that we have a world's first milestone on that. Uh, looks like we recovered Vanguard stage, so that's successful as well. Our goal achieved there. So aside from this stage, everything else is recoverable. And that's pretty impressive. With that success under my belt, I decided to turn my eyes to aircraft and try to build an aircraft to fill those survey contracts since we couldn't do it with the, with the airship just yet. Uh, we didn't have powerful enough engines, though this is a nice little turboprop engine. It might be able to do better on, uh, on an airship, but for now, I tried various configurations. You saw sort of an A-10 idea just now, and then here we've got folding wings, but those are really long wings. In retrospect, being able to have those long wings might have helped. Uh, my eventual design wasn't the greatest on the whole lift thing. But uh, yeah, we'll have to try that out some other time. Instead, I tried a more conventional design with a uh, Beechcraft Bonanza sort of feel to it with the V-tail. And the thing is, the engine still isn't really robust. It's not the most powerful engine ever, as we'll soon discover. But yeah. Uh, just sort of basically getting the aerodynamics. I don't have FAR in here to help me with the aerodynamics. FAR is a very useful tool. You know, people often think of uh, Fair Aerospace Research as somehow making it more difficult to make aircraft. It's not. It's actually uh, really making it easier because it gives you so many tools to see what's going on with your aircraft and plenty of warning about what might go wrong. As far as naming the aircraft, I had a complete failure of imagination. I, I, I came up with Deep Craft. But I ended up with Bonanza anyway. Uh, Jeb had to be the one to pilot it. Uh, you can see its specs there are really, really light. Uh, not a heavy craft at all. So let's see how it works. I think this is the first time we'll have Kerbal Chatter. The Chatterer is installed and I think this is our first flight with Jeb. So off he goes. I forget if we put him in the airship. Might have. So far so good. 100 meters per second, but it's really not getting much faster than that. A reminder, that's about 220 miles an hour. So for, for, for a propeller plane, it's, you know, modest. So for this kind of style of plane, for a Beechcraft Bonanza and all, um, yeah, that that's about the right sort of speed you'd expect. I mean, it's not a warplane, it's not a... Mustang or anything like that, but yeah, uh, it's turning. But I, I sort of felt that the that the aerodynamics were lacking and the lift was lacking. We did have a chance to do some science crew report while flying over the lowlands, so we got that. But we'll have to recover. And so I actually aim to land. I decide that, uh, well, we know it works, but we could improve upon it a little bit. It didn't feel particularly great at this point. It certainly didn't have the speed I wanted in order to do the survey contracts. I didn't want to take forever, especially since this was recorded during a live stream, it would be very tedious for the audience for me to spend like an hour flying out to a location. 
we don't have jet engines yet so maybe we'll have to wait for that in order to really do those survey contracts without using rockets to do it and sort of uh, doing a ballistic trajectory into the proper location in this situation I ended up throttling down way too much and so we uh, set down a little bit early also I had a little bit of a camera malfunction so yeah but anyway at least we got Jeb down safe though just barely that could have gone very badly considering the camera issues and the fact that I was so low on throttle that we didn't get to the runway here's attempt number two after some tweaks that runway though we we need to upgrade that if we want to do anything serious uh, anything more serious than this biplanes and the small propeller planes maybe it's all right but anything heavier and that those bumps are gonna be very irritating not too sure about the the configuration of the control surfaces I mean it's functioning all right I'm trying to fly upside down briefly here just to see how that goes not very well but yeah might have to review the control surface configuration I decided to check out the gliding again. You can see here I throttled down, but it's losing speed and we've pitched down. So you can see I'm trying to find where we stop losing speed and start gaining speed. And that's pretty severe right there. We should be getting better lift than that. I mean, the aircraft is quite light and it's got a reasonable sized wing. So I was sort of surprised by how badly it was performing. And I decided to try and set it down here. The goal was to have Jeb get out and do some science. Also, just to check that I could land it properly. Its stall speed was higher than I expected. As you might expect from what I've been saying. So here we go. Brakes. And Jeb. King on EVA. And, uh, well, we got the report from the Lowlands without actually having him sit down on the soil. Um, nope, nope, just uh, keep that. And board. Alright, and then we can go off again and maybe try and get to a different location. At a prompting from the audience, I decided to try and aim for the mountains and see if this aircraft could get over them. And also because the, the survey contracts seem to have locations on the other side of the mountains. So that was a likely thing. The problem is it really doesn't want to go up past a certain point and it was difficult to coax it beyond 6 kilometers. Sort of a service ceiling, though I'm not entirely sure. I, I didn't really test it to its absolute limits. Past a certain point I decided that we really couldn't safely cross the mountains and I would instead check its ability to splash down. This was obviously a very risky thing to do with Jeb, who has a bad habit of perishing early on in many of my series, but I decided it was worth the attempt for future, for future flights, just to know that I could figure out how to do it. But you see me leveling off here. I'm, I'm aware that the stall speed is somewhere around 70-ish, or at least it felt that way when I tried to land earlier. You can see I still have a little bit of throttle up and that's because otherwise I was afraid it would stall. And we're setting down. It's looking okay. And that looks like a proper splashdown and then it does a backflip. Then it does a black backflip for no apparent reason. And you know, nearly gives me a heart attack. But it turns out that Jeb is fine. Uh, though the plane is not entirely recoverable anymore. So that's a shame. So I would conclude that it was a good thing that I tried out the whole splashing down thing because there's obviously some glitchiness with that and maybe we need to think about... I've got EVA parachutes in here and maybe we should think about having them parachute down instead of trying to splash down on future flights. Anyway, here I am starting to build a rocket for Jeb to fly up in and try and get to space in. But we'll take care of this in the next episode. I think we've done enough here. We reached orbit, we flew our first airplane, and uh, we will proceed on from there. So thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did enjoy this video, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below. And I'll see you next time.